So if you've just joined back Warzone 2 after the Ashika Island update, this video is going to tell you how to get the best possible aim inside Warzone 2.0. So to start off, we're going to give you the basic controller settings and then after that, we're going to give you some general tips that will help you improve your aim inside Warzone. So first of all, obviously you want to make sure your input is your controller. Then when it comes to button layout, you've actually got a lot of new options now. So you can either choose the default options that we have here and that depends on the kind of controller you're using. If you've got back buttons, then obviously you want to use those. Take advantage of having them on your controller. If not, you can also set a custom button layout so you can actually switch the buttons that you use for certain things. So if you think it'll be easier to ping with a, a different button, for example, if you wanted to swap it for down instead of up, or if you wanted to change the button that you slide with, for example, you can change all of that um, with this. So it's actually really good that they've added these extra button layouts for you now. And it will help you stay on target with your aim as well if you do change some of these buttons uh, around. Just find out what's most comfortable for you because it's going to depend on player to player. Personally, I like just to play with default. I've gotten used to playing like that now, so I don't really want to change it. Bumper ping can be useful again, but I'd rather you go in and actually tune this yourself with the custom button layout. Flipped is useful, um, even for your aim as well, especially if you want to get the shots off a lot quicker. If you use the bumpers instead of the triggers, you actually get a quicker response time in the game, but personally, I still like just using the triggers. I think it just feels better to me. Um, and then when it comes to stick layout, you want to leave that default. Controller orientation, unless you are using it for any other reason, then up should be the default. Vibration should definitely be off. And then we are getting into the actual aim settings here first. So when it comes to the actual aim, I think five, six, seven, and eight are the best range to have your horizontal and vertical stick. Keep them exactly the same because it just keeps it more consistent. Uh, personally, I use seven. Uh, sometimes I use six. It just depends on the kind of day I'm having, to be honest with you. But I'm between six and seven. But like I said, five, six, seven, or eight are really good options. And uh, when it comes to the sensitivity multiplier, of course, you don't really want to touch this one because when we get to an, into the advanced tab we'll fine tune that even further vertical aim axis you don't really want to touch that either aim down sight is hold moving into the advanced tab now we're going to be going over the target aim assist which you do want on black ops or default are the best and only two options because they still give you rotational aim assist uh, we made a whole video breaking this down but black ops was a bit more broken i think they did nerf it a couple of updates ago so you could choose between default or black ops both are good uh, ADS aim assist, you definitely want this on as well. Third person is only if you do play the third person mode, so I mean that's going to come down to preference. Uh, I prefer assist. Uh, aim response curve, I prefer dynamic and I'll show you why in just a moment. Uh, but standard is also very good as well, linear is not so great. Again, we made a whole video breaking that down, so I'll leave that link at the end of this one. Um, ADS multiplier focus, just leave it normal. ADS uh, transition timing, timing, you want to leave that as instant because you want to make sure your ADS is quick as possible or at the same speed as what your gun's ADS time is essentially. And then this is where you want to fine tune the zoom levels. So anything below a three point zoom or a maybe a four point zoom, you do want to make sure it's between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. I think that's a really good range and it slows down the aim a little bit further for you. So you get a bit more control. Um, and then when it comes to anything higher than that, you want to actually up the sensitivity the opposite way. And the reason for that is because you are sniping um, usually with these uh, optics and be able to swipe across with your analog stick and get that sticky aim is really really handy at getting those shots landed. Uh, inputs dead zone you do want to change this as well i think 0 0.05 is really good if you've got a new controller bump this up slightly if you've got an older controller because that is obviously your dead zones and where you tend to get stick drift and then triggers you also want to lower this as well because it will help you get a bit more of a response uh, in your shooting triggers gyro i have off because this is mainly for if you want to use like the the gyroscope inside the controller itself i don't really know anyone who would really want to use this unless you have some kind of disability or something the next thing to make sure your aim stays on point in this game is to choose the correct guns with the correct attachments and the correct tuning and we've got tons of videos already on the channel going over best class setup so we don't really want to cover that but just to give you a rough idea the M4 is really good for recoil control the TAC 56 is one of the best we also do have guns like the M13 and the Hemlock that are also very good at range. Some of the LMGs also that are very good at range are the Sakin, uh, the RAL, the RPK is still relatively easy to manage as well, but the TTK isn't great. Now quickly showing this in the firing range now and some quick tips to get you better at the game. So the first thing is you want to be able to snap between targets and this is why I choose the dynamic 
um, aim assist type because as you can see here it actually speeds up between these two targets here and that's what you want to be able to do so if you're shooting one target and then you basically switch to the next one you actually get a bit of a more snappier response than if you just left it as default so that is why i prefer this option and then when you do switch between targets and something that no one really talks about and i haven't really mentioned it before either is that you actually want to stop firing between the targets so you shoot one target stop firing and then start firing again and it basically makes it easier for you to stay on target and the reason why is because you're not having to control the recoil as you transition between target to target now when you're using a gun that is easy to use like the tac 56 i don't think it really matters other than the fact that you will be wasting bullets but if you are using a bit more of a difficult recoil gun then you will need to stop firing between this transition time and you just need to learn how to time that so once you kill a target stop firing then start firing again um, and then obviously you want to be landing your shots there now another thing you want to also do is basically learn the recoil path of the gun so as you fire into a wall you can see the tac 56 has pretty much zero recoil here um, but obviously what you want to do is counter that and pull down to your analog stick and as you can see here you pretty much get zero recoil with this gun in particular uh, but obviously if you're using a more difficult gun like the row or something else then you will find that controlling recoil will be a bit more difficult but it's worth practicing because it will make you a lot better and then obviously you want to aim for the chest for the most part because it means that if you do kick the gun upwards it's going to land a couple of headshots that means a faster ttk um, and just overall you want to make sure you get your practice in and the firing range as well because that will definitely help you know obviously these targets don't really move so it's kind of difficult to practice here once we do get plunder uh, back inside warzone then we can practice on that a bit better on real targets with real hp and actual armor plates as well so overall like i said it's just going to be a bit of practice to get used to controlling the gun but Controlling recoil is a major, major factor um, and actually getting really good aim in this game. And then centering is also super important. So if you're running towards a target, you want to make sure your crosshairs are already aiming in that direction in the first place. So let's say I'm trying to tar track this target at the farthest possible distance. You want to make sure when you're running, then you are able to track them. Now, obviously, these um, dummies will force the aim assist one way or another. So that's another thing you need to kind of factor in. When you're actually in real games, this happens as well. If you're trying to shoot a specific target and their teammate runs across the screen, you're going to end up tracking the guy that's closer. Uh, but you want to make sure you try and keep your centering on this target as much as possible so that when you do aim down sight, um, you are pretty much on target already. You take that shot. So as you can see, this middle target here. So let's say I was aiming this way. You want to make sure you're aiming roughly and then ADS and you'll get that extra aim assist to kick in when you pretty much get on target so let's say for example we're aiming this direction once again focus your target then aim down sight and you're pretty much sorted and that is what the rotational aim assist does for you so black ops or default is the best two options so there we have it those are some quick tips to get your aim more improved inside warzone 2 if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and thank you very much for watching